I'm Dan York, and I'm here at IETF 86 in Orlando with Jason Livingood, one of the co-authors of an internet draft about negative trust anchors. So, Jason, uh, who are you? I'm Jason Livingood. I work for Comcast. I'm uh, uh, an engineering leader at the company. And one of the things that we've done is tried to take the lead on DNSSEC deployment worldwide. And uh, in January of last year, we finished our full deployment of DNSSEC in our resolvers so that we're now fully validating for all of our high-speed internet subscribers. And we've also signed, cryptographically signed, all of our names authoritatively. Which uh, is truly an awesome feat. We've thanks. Been, you know, within large industry, we certainly appreciate that. So. Yeah. You wrote this thing about negative trust anchors. What's that all about? Sure, sure. Well, you know, it's not as negative as it sounds. <laughs> uh, it actually prevents some negativity, uh, you know, on the part of our users, uh, our customers. And really what that's about is that uh, occasionally you'll have a domain name fail to resolve. So validation will fail. And the reason that fails uh, will oftentimes be because of shortcomings in the authoritative uh, operations. So for example, someone messes up a key rollover or creates some other kind of problem with DNSSEC. It has nothing to do with a security failure. It's merely reflective of the fact that the authoritative operations are a little bit immature. And so a negative trust anchor is really there to say, we know that a validation has failed, um, and the reason that we've, it's failed because we've done some investigation is because there is a, a signing problem. It's not a security problem, and therefore, we will tell the, the resolvers not to attempt to uh, validate DNSSEC for a particular zone. For, right, so, so the resolver know, doesn't come back IRS. saying it's gov bad. or NOAA.gov, correct. Yeah. And that way, to the end user, they get a resolution. They'll get an A record or quad A or C name or whatever it happens to be. Um, and they don't know anything about the um, signing problem that's occurred in the back end. So it's really a pressure relief valve for us um, in this early phase, early adopter phase for DNSSEC, so that if someone really messes up their uh, signing of their zone and uh, we found out about it either on our own or from customers or from the authoritative owner, um, we have some way to say, for this very limited period of time, say a few hours or a day, um, we will not validate that particular name, um, and we'll turn it back on. You know, once things are solved, so, so it's that it's an important thing, especially for an early adopter. So, in your draft, then, what you're proposing is a mechanism that resolver administrators mm -hmm. could use to temporarily allow this. Correct. And it would be it would be have to be something that each resolver administrator would have to go and insert one of these negative trust. That's answers. right. That's right. And uh, it, but certainly it's apparent. So, for example, if Facebook.com signs or Google.com signs, and then in the first week or two they have some problem, you really want to be able to sort of have a safety you know right. valve there so that end users can get to it, um, because clearly that that wouldn't be a, a pure security issue at that point. And that's what the draft describes. So it describes what is a negative trust anchor. What are these problems? It also makes clear that at the end of the day, responsibility for correct um, authoritative DNS operations really resolves, uh, excuse me, resides with that uh, that domain owner. They're ultimately in charge, whether it's an A record or a quad A or a DS record. It's right. really all the same. Um, however, this is the special case where the, the pain or the problems uh, of validation failures when it's due to this operational maturity for authoritative owners really gets, you know, the, the ISPs or the resolver operators feel that pain. And so this is a way to, to, to solve that. And it describes that this is useful for really a very limited period of time. It's not helpful in the long term once we're at wide scale deployment, but it is helpful now, I think, uh, during this early deployment phase. Now, your draft is up for discussion this week at the uh, DNS Op Working Group. That's right. What, what's the status, or where do you where do you expect it to go? Well, right this? now it's an individual draft, um, and I'm hoping uh, that it gets adopted as a working group draft. Uh, although, even if it doesn't, you know, I think I'd take it up as an individual ID. Uh, but all signs are, are that uh, it'll get picked up as a working group draft. There's a bunch of feedback in my queue, uh, most of which I think is documented in the open issues section of the document uh, for the next version. Uh, I think the biggest thing I've heard people ask for is, how do you specifically do this with bind or with uh, unbound or with nominum, uh, vantio, and so on. So very specific implementation notes at the end in an appendix and some other things as well, um, uh, you know, little, little bits uh, here and there. But by and large, I think there's been a lot of feedback until now. Uh, there are a bunch of revisions right before this meeting. 
uh, and I think I'm hoping that it'll get adopted and we've got maybe a couple or three more revisions and we're good to go. Great. Well, thank you for your time and sure. best wishes with the uh, things here. And, and I guess I will, I will put a, a link to the draft mm -hmm. uh, here in the video. And if people do have comments and feedback, they should send them to you Absolutely. and the other authors. Yep.